Hey guys, enter the stars and welcome to the show this morning. We were looking at the pet goat and I figured this would be a good time just to re look at this. You know, this is the famed children's book that Bush was reading in that classroom on that fateful day. The pet goat. Now, we have some breaking revelations that you haven't heard before on any decodes of pet goat. But more importantly, we're going to dig into the actual book that was actually published on Illuminati Day, May 1st. Now, I'm going to throw a lot of information at you today, but by the end of this, what you're going to understand is that in fact, this is all coded. Now, here is the May 1st, 1997, Reading Mastery 2, Storybook 1, by Siegfried Engelman. And as you can see, it was published on May 1st, which of course is the Bavarian Illuminati, the date that they were founded. Now, May 1st also holds other secrets because it just so happens to be the day of highest sacrifice. Now, the publishing year is 221 years after the Illuminati was founded in Bavaria. Now, I want you to remember this May 1st date because we're going to come back to it. It's going to resurface again and it's going to confirm that we're not all crazy. That there are patterns here that have not been identified before. Again, if you're just tuning into the show, this is the book that George Bush was reading on the date in 2001 when towers fell down. Now, here's where things get crazy because if you look at 1776, the year the Illuminati was founded, and 1997, they are visually mirror years of one another. What do you mean, Casey? Well, let me show you what I'm talking about here. Make sure we're connected and we're going to keep going with this. Welcome to the show, everybody. Looks like there's 160 so far. Someone says buffering. Okay, I'm just going to have to refresh. Okay, let's get into this. So what is, what is 1776 and 1997? That the year that this book came out. Let's do a little draw on the screen time so I can show you guys what I'm talking about. Text. And we're going to start here. 1997. 1776. You'll see the dub double numbers in the middle. 9977. And you'll see that the sevens there's the seven at the end of 97 and the sevens in the middle and then the nines in the middle of 1997 and the nine in reverse back here mirror years now may 1st is the 121st day of the year let's do some writing on here 121st day of the year okay and from may 1st to september 11th is 133 days from May 1st to the 11th of September. I wanted to show you guys that as well here. Let's see, where is it? Here it is. And this 33 is going to come up again and again and again. Here's the date calculator. 5-1-2020 to the 11th of September 2020. You just use the year 2020 as an arbitrary number. But as you can see here, it's 133 days. Now follow me on this. This is very, very important. This isn't just throwing a bunch of numbers together. Now, let's do this. We're going to start over here. 133 days. Now, let's look at the 21s. Let's do this. What other 21s do we have? Well, we have... This reading mastery, level two, 
Storybook one. Story one. There's another two and a one. Now, why is it two and one important? Because 2001 is the year where all this would happen. Let's go back to the 13s, though. We're going to make a call for the 13s because on the cover of this book, we see 13 butterflies. Now, we're going to get into the 13 butterflies and what that means because this goes very deep as well. So here's the book. Let's make it bigger. And you can count for yourself 13 but butterflies. But there's also a dragon. What's up with the dragon? Well, I believe this is signifying 13 dragons. Why would I say that? Well, there's this 1974 book called 13 Dragons. Here it is right here. And when I dug into this woman, the author of this book, Gladys, Dorothy Gladys Spicer, I found something very peculiar. I searched the word dragon in her book, and lo and behold, it appears 88 times. Why would this appear 88 times? Well, we all know the significance of the number 88 as it relates to the towers. That's why 88 xenon lights shine forward. Here's the one to three results of 88 searching the word dragon. Is this a coincidence? Well, I don't think so because Dorothy Gladys Spicer, the author of this book, 13 Dragons, had a fascination with the number 13. In fact, she had a number a fascination with the number 13 as well as evil entities associated with the number 13. She wrote a book called 13 Ghosts. She wrote another book called 13 Devils and 13 Giants too. Dorothy Gladys Spicer. Now, it goes deeper because all of these were children's books. Now, this woman died in 1974, but that was right about the year that the Trade Center was established and, and basically built. It completed in 1973. But you got to ask yourself, what's up with this? Now, the plot thickens because this woman, Dorothy Gladys Spicer, also had a fascination with the date of May 1st. The origin of the Illuminati. She sure did. This is a blog talking about Dorothy Gladys Spicer. The Book of Festivals, written in 1937. Dorothy Gladys Spicer says that May Day celebrations, including use of the Maypole, were transplanted to the United States from British soil. On May 1st, 1628, the Puritans at Marymount held a May Day celebration, replete with dancers romping hand in hand. Remember, this is the date that the pet goat released, May 1st. And she talks about this. The woman who made this other book called The Thirteen Dragons, which relates back to the cover art of the pet goat book. The reading book. Now watch this. She talks about that it was replete with dancers romping hand in hand around a pole made from an 80 foot goodly pine. Spicer also says that in the Americas, the custom of merrymaking and gladness on this day has persisted through the years. Perhaps this was true at the time Spicer wrote the book, but I suspect the practice is not as prevalent today. So she had this fascination. Not only with the number 13 and evil entities in children's books, but also the highest day of Illuminati sacrifice and the date that it was founded. Now, 
Just so you know that we're not crazy. Ninja Gaiden talked about the 13 dragons. Here. As well as Dragon Mania Legends. And Guild Wars, and probably many, many more games talk about the 13 dragons. This is Ninja Gaiden. Let's do a search on the page for this. Find 13 dragons. There it is. Again, it appears in Mania Legends. here and also it appears in Guild Wars I, I believe these are all games some of them might be online others might be role-playing games but I wanted to show you that there's something to this 13 dragons okay and I'm starting to wonder if this is the 13 bloodlines many of you probably already came to that conclusion in the chat that this may have something to do with the 13 bloodlines. But there's more to this story because there is another. Remember how Yoda in Star Wars said, There is another. He was talking about the twin sister of Luke Skywalker. Well, there is another pet goat. And we can call this a twin pet goat book. Here it is right here. January 16th, 1995. Now, this twin pet goat book released in the UK. And it released two years before the other pet goat by the same name. Published on January 16th. Now, oh, this is crazy because watch this. What happens when you reverse this? January 16th, 116. It becomes the numbers you see on your screen in 1995. Unbelievable. Now, this book was 219 years after the Illuminati was formed in 1776. Now the books published four and six years before Blind Eleven and of course we know that Bush was born in 46. Four and six years. Let's put that on here. Four and six years. Bush was born in 46. Now, there's more to the Bush story as well, because on the exact day and year that George Bush was born, Dewey, which was the governor at the time in New York, established a center for world trade. He actually picked the board of directors as George Bush was coming out of his mother's womb in the exact year and day of his birthday. And you can't make that up because he would be the very president under which they would fall. At the time, George Bush Sr. was like 21 years old, something like that. And I'm wondering if all of this was basically predestined or preordained in the Illuminati. Now, before we go on, I also want you to notice all the twos and ones that we just established, which, had, which was foreshadowing the year that this would all go down. The twos and ones are all over the place. May 1st being the 121st day of the year. 221 days before. Or 221 years, I'm sorry. Before the Illuminati would establish themselves. Or after the Illuminati established themselves. Interesting stuff, right? And... That's about it for the twos and the ones for this synchronicity. Now, 
what else do we have here? We have these twin books. And the story of the pet goat appears on page 153. Let's put that on here. Page 153. And it starts out the girl and her goat. The girl and her goat. That's GG. Which is 77. That's probably a nod to the 1776, the establishment of the Illuminati. Now we're going to, I got an excerpt from this, but this book, I actually had ordered it a long time ago. And it's sitting, I think, at my mother's house in storage. Uh, and I'm beating myself up because I should have brought that with me so that we could read the pages together, or screenshot the pages. It just didn't seem as important back then, but I knew that I wanted to get a copy of this book. And I have this book, this exact book that we're going over today. And But other people have basically established... Um, have, have actually identified what they were actually talking about in the book. The exact lines read in the book. A girl and her goat. So. Okay, I just want to establish here. 1776. Illuminati established on May 1st is what it says in this article. This is what they were established in Ingolstadt, Weishaupt. Near Ingolstadt. Uh, and then this is the May 1st date, highest day of Illuminati sacrifice. It's in the witch's calendar. You can look that up for yourself. Now, this is how the story reads. A girl got a pet goat. The story begins. She liked to go running with her pet goat. She played with the goat in her yard. But the goat did some things that made the girl's dad mad. The goat ate things. He ate cans and he ate canes. He ate pans and he ate pains. He even ate capes and caps. Now, we're going to break all that down because there's something to it. I'm wondering if the cans that the, the goat ate were a nod to the aluminum coating on the towers. And... Is the cape that he ate, is that representative of the planes? And the panes, there's panes and windows and buildings. He ate panes as well. And if you think about what all this could mean, you've got a goat who's eating everything, consuming the towers. Now, I believe that the reference to the, the panes has to link into the goat god Pan. They're, after all, they are talking about a goat, right? And what did Pan do? He made children disappear with sound frequencies. His flute. He would lure the children away from their villages with his flute. Much like what I believe happened on that fateful day in 2001, I believe that they used sound frequencies now what you're looking at here on the screen are images as to where all of this is based out of and it is human sacrifice we know that VCs in fact some modern VCs rubella mumps are still uh, basically grown out of fetal cell lines we know that to this day when you get an MMR it uses fetal cell lines from an original fetus. And we know there's a possibility that the new VCs that are coming out may involve the very same technology. And here's actually a woman using the technology to look inside of an egg. This is how they also manufacture eggs. They use embryos from chickens. Now you understand the connection between children and chickens. To the elite, they're just embryos like chicken eggs. More connection to deep evil. And it was portrayed in iPad Go 2 in this image here. The actual way that they manufacture VCs is what I believe we're also looking at in this image. It's, it's too exact not to be. 
Now, the story of the goat goes on. Because at the end, a robber tries to steal a red car. And I believe that that word steel is also a play on words to the steel buildings that were coated in aluminum. Now, all of that coating in that story, I believe, is what is called irony. The goat steals and consumes things, right, in the story. But ironically, he attacks the robber who is trying to steal the car. Even though the goat is the one stealing everything. That's called irony in a story, right? Unbelievable. Now, many other outlets, news outlets, noticed the, the bizarre nature of this story that was being read upside down by Bush in the classroom. There were many other reports about it. It's not just us in the conspiracy circles just assuming that this story, there was something to it. The Baltimore Sun reported on it. Unusual book, unusual day. And this is actually where I got the verbiage from the story. It's actually very hard to find, as well as the Aspen Times reported on it as well. Now, back to the story of the pet goat. What does the red car represent? Well, I believe that is code for murder. Red backwards is the last three letters of the word murder. Red Rum, of course, the iconic scene from the film The Shining. He writes Red Rum in the mirror and then it spells murder. Anytime you see red, that is the color of murder. Now, I wanted to open the show the way I did to show you that there are pe people writing children's books encoding deep, dark stuff. In fact, Breaking news, I woke up today. Breaking news on this woman, which YouTube does not like us reporting on her. So we're not even going to say her name right now. But if you just go into Google and do a search, you can get the latest news. Hit the news tab. And there is a children's author who has been identified as the girlfriend of of Mr. Eggstain. Here it is right here. And she wrote children's books. So there you go. This stuff is crazy. Now. How does I Pet Goat 2 fit into all this? Well, first of all, there was no I Pet Goat 1. The book was called, or there's a story in the book, called The Pet Goat. The I in the 2012 animation was the clue, the letter, the word I. Why? Because in the 1997 book, there was only one capital letter that appears throughout the entire book. And the letter is I. Now... If you look at, let me show you that. I want to show you that reference so you guys can see what I'm talking about. This is crazy, you guys. The letter I is the only capitalized letter in that entire book. And it's because they're trying to train the ch children how to read, right? They call it DI, direct instructions. And that's what the educators refer to it as. So children learn to read first, then they learn the rules of capitalization. Well, who is the I am? That would be Jesus. And you'll notice prominently in I Pet Goat, the Antichrist character. So now we understand how Jesus fits into all this because he told his disciples to cast the net to the right side of the boat. And when they pulled it up, there were 153 fish. And that is why the story of the pet goat appears on page 153 in the book. In the Reading Mastery 2 Storybook 1. You see. So, 
the way that this story really should read is the devil goat pan consumed the aluminum can coated steel towers with sound. That's the way that this story should really read when you see it beneath the surface and behind the veil. Now, the plot thickens even more because these books were written in a specific method called direct instruction, which I just told you about. Well, they used to call it die star. Like killing a star. Unbelievable. Die star. Now, let me see. Was it in here? Let me look in here. I want to show you guys the documentation for everything I just said. Not in there. So now you begin to understand the occult meaning behind this book. Why it was read on that day. The 13 bloodlines. The people who did it. Page 153. A knock on Christ. They performed their own Antichrist miracle. By dustifying the towers. And there's so much more to it. This woman here. Who wrote the 13 dragons. I believe was the precursor to authors like. Harry Potter all of her books were deep occult meaning 13 dragons 13 ghosts 13 demons 13 dra uh, giants all of her books were occult in meaning and we went over all that earlier in the show now this is one of those shows you might need to watch a couple times because I threw a lot of information at you but it's all there look at the co cover of this book in the 19 I, I don't know when the 13 dragons was written but look at this this is a children's book. It's got a dragon attacking a child. And they're in the, the, the flowers. Look at the similarities between this cover and this cover. They're very much the same. A dragon in the flowers. It's almost like they got their inspiration from this woman. Who wrote these books. Unbelievable. Yeah, I'm going to dig a little bit more into this. Here's 13 Ghosts. And all her books are about 13 all around the world. So you can imagine these are probably these books are probably about the 13 bloodlines, right? I'll link all this in the pinned comment so you can see it. Here, there's not a lot of biography on this woman, Dorothy Gladys Spicer. Um, again, she died in like 1974. But it shows all of her books, 13 Ghosts, 13 Monsters, 13 Witches, 2 Wizards, The Devil. These are children's books, you guys. Okay? So when people tell me all the good that someone in an elite circle is doing, that means absolutely nothing to me. Because as you just saw, Eggstein's own girlfriend was writing children's books. But yet, she loved him. Knowing what he was capable of, knowing what he was up to. And then we've got this tw twin pair of books that encode the actual date of the event before it would happen. And all of this was by design. Now, what could this possible, how could this possibly all be happening? It could be happening on a supernatural level, but I believe it is actual spiritual sorcery is what this is. It's exactly what it is. Spiritual sorcery. The pet goat. Look at this madness. Unbelievable. Just want to make sure we get all of this covered. Unusual book, unusual day. Oh, here it is. Let's split. Let's. I want to show you guys this. Direct Instruction, once called Die Star, is a highly scripted program involving logical precision, careful measurement of mastery, rapid correction of mistakes, early emphasis on phonics. Note the alliteration in rhyming and strict schedules. That's why the Baltimore teachers recognized. My pet goat right away. It's not just a story that a teacher in a loosely organized program might or might not pull off the shelf for her first or second graders. It's part of a design sequence. Black magic. 
and all teachers introduce it at about the same time. We all know Pet Goat well, said Berkeley. Much of the established disdains direct instruction, so no one really likes it, which was developed 40 years ago by a, the philosopher named Siegfried, Siegfried Engelmann. So this is the guy that wrote these, these instructional books to teach children how to read. He was the co-author of My Pet Goat. It's actually The Pet Goat. Direct instruction is a lot of work for teachers, but it is a proven track record at urban schools like Baltimore's City Springs Elementary. President Bush probably knew none of this when he set out to read The Pet Goat at Emma Booker that fateful morning. This is a loaded article from the Baltimore Sun right here because it talks about all everything that we just said. Wow. Crazy stuff, right? Let's go back in the chat. Oh, one thing I wanted to end the show with today is they gave Trump another chance. They asked him, what did you mean when you said that you wished Giz well, well? <laughs> it's like a tongue twister. And he doubled down on it. So, if you have questions about all of this, uh, you know, when are people going to wake up? That is the question. When are people going to wake up to all of this? Why would you double down on that? Why wouldn't you begin to back away from that and say, look, there's a lot of evidence. But, sadly, people will just continue to say that it's all coded that we are just not smart enough and he's playing 5D chess. But again, I argue, if you can't take a man at his word, then what's his word worth? All right, let's go into the chat. Let this catch up. Maybe answer some questions about everything we just covered. Oh, I wanted to show you where they, they, they capitalization. I want to show you that real quick. Unusual book. I think it's in this article. Capital find. All right. Here we go. Note some, um, note some unusual aspects of the text. Okay. In the books for the earliest grades, the only capital letter that appears is I. So this is where I Pet Goat comes in, right? Because it's not called I Pet Goat, it's called The Pet Goat. But in the animation that came out in 2012, they call it I Pet Goat. And I believe this is why. Because they want you to focus on the Jesus aspect of all this. And that's why they showed the Antichrist in I Pet Goat too. It's as in direct instruction as the educators refer to it. Children learn to read first, then the rules of capitalization. And though it can't be shown here, the text has diacritical markings. Long vowels are marked like the O in goat and letters that don't say anything like the A in goat and the A in steel are printed smaller than the other letters. Delivering a message to children learning to read. Don't worry so much about me. Worry about my neighbor. So, this is spell casting. And they are spelling. And something happens when things are spoken. Now it says the markings disappear in reading mastery books for older children said Muriel Berkeley of the Baltimore Curriculum Project, which operates three direct instructional schools, and capital letters appear in their proper places later on too. So as this goes up in reading level, all of that disappears. So glad we revisited that. Let's go back here in the chat, let this catch up. Thanks to the 600 people that showed up to the show this morning. I appreciate each and every one of you. Yes. We've got vowels, vowels. We're not supposed to swear any oath. We've got spells being casted, spelling. We have blackboard, which is black magic, 
where they write the spells down. We've got chanting and repeating. That's why they have you write the sentences 50 times if you get in trouble, right? They have you write it on the board. This is all black magic and sorcery. It's all worked into the very educational system, all right? Have you de done a decode on the Washman move? I have not, Jared. I tried to start watching it. It just was really boring, I guess. I know that sounds crazy, but I can't get through certain films and movies just because of the way they're written or the actor I might not particularly like. But maybe I'll take a look at that today. Whiteboards. There you go, Tikur. So, yes, this woman that we just looked at today was probably the precursor and inspiration for the woman that wrote the Harry Potter and all that stuff because she, the, the woman that predated her is off the rails. I mean, how do you make a whole series of children books, children's books based on the very evil number 13? Not just one book, but like five for children. I mean, this is crazy. And then to find out that her 13 Dragons book was probably the inspiration for the cover of the pet, the, uh, the book in which the pet goat was in, to me, that was pretty much a slam dunk. All right. There's a film called 13 Ghosts. Okay. That's interesting, Daniel. Now, we've got many, many more shows later in the week. We're going to pull out this. Um, we were just talking about the Boston Marathon. And like two weeks after that, we find out this guy's going to, he's not getting the death penalty. So we're going to cover that in one show. We're also going to cover mRNA VCs. And how safe they are. We found a study with lots of safety issues with mRNA VCs, which seem to be leading the race right now. The DNA VCs kind of fell off, and now they're leading with the mRNA. Now, this is a race. There's many, many, many of these VCs and many companies, many of which who got federal funding, and uh, they're all racing to get this VC. Now, I'll be interested to see if we don't have a VC day, just like in the Utopia series, the British Utopia series, in which they had a VC day, which just so happened to be right around November. I think it was November 6th, maybe? I'll have to go back and take a look, but we covered that in a previous video. So if they try to pull that madness, we're already all over that. Then we're gonna cover this paper that came out in 2006, authored by the George Bush administration talking about an influenza spamdemic and the similarities to what we're going through right now are chilling. We're going to get into that on another show. Read about this children's author that was Egg Stain's girlfriend. Now this is interesting because there's email correspondence back and forth between Jizwell and the stain. We're going to call him the stain from now on, okay? Because he's just a stain. And there was email correspondence going on between the two, and she was trying to get him to publicly announce who this girl is, this secret girlfriend, right? Why? So that so that Gizwell could get some of the heat off of her. Rumored, uh, rumored stain ex-girlfriend and alleged accomplice Giswell is a household name at this point, but it turns out there may have been another woman in the picture as well. The trove of new docs unsealed last week suggests that the stain was also romantically linked to children's book author Shelley Ann Lewis. The British-born author was reportedly a frequent passenger on the Stain's private jet, often accompanying him on trips to New York and his infamous private island of Little St. James. 
Lewis is thought to have begun dating the stain in 99 when she was 22 years old, working in an art department of Christie's Auction House in New York. Okay. According to the recently unsealed court docs, Jiswell previously attempted to get the stain to publicly announce Lewis as his girlfriend instead of Maxwell. Lewis now runs a children's publish house named after her own nickname which is apparently chocolate sauce the plot thickens you know what chocolate sauce is that's the sauce that they harvest from pineal glands so people that come on the channel and talk about all the good that they think that Trump's doing that means absolutely nothing to me. I go by actions. Because all of these elite evil people do good things or appear to do good things. That means absolutely nothing because they're doing one thing with one hand and one on the other. So, let's go back in the chat here. I challenge each and every one of you that go to other channels that continue to run cover for Trump to remind them very politely that he too rode on the LL Cool J Express the day before the stain got taken out. It was announced right there in the flight logs. And none of these channels seem to want to talk about that. They want to talk about all the times that the, everyone else rode on there, but they forget and we won't forget because we're here to find the truth. And it's only a matter of time before people come forward with memories of the real Donald Trump during those years. Now, many of them will be bought off. Trump has a lot of money. You know, for some people, it's worth it just to say, OK, give me five million and I'll never speak again. And then their attorneys get together behind closed doors. They write up contracts non-disclosure agreements, everyone signs it, and those people move on with their life. And you'll never, ever, ever know what happened. Not everybody wants to go through the court system. And to be honest with you, it saddens me that the person leading the charge, even though she was 17 at the time, she almost seems to be running cover for Trump as well. And some of her testimony is conflicting. And that concerns me to no end. Because I feel like there are so many more people and so many more victims who could be leading this charge who were younger at the time, which would make more of an impact. 14, 13 years old. That should be the poster people to help take down the elite and what we're getting is Virginia Jeffrey. And look, I'm not, I think she's in the right place and I'm not knocking her coming forward. It takes a lot of risk to come out, but come on, you were 17. In a lot of countries, that's a legal age. So then in many people's minds, more than you can imagine, that is a legal age. And so what that leaves us with is the traffic aspect of it, which is very hard to prove because as an almost adult person you have to see if she was coerced or if she was held beyond her against her will she would have to recall specific events in which that happened so I'm almost feeling like this is a setup like at the end of the day they're giving Virginia all this attention because they'd rather have her and her story come out which is a lot less damaging than what really happened. Which is what I believe is they were bringing these children in from foreign countries. Trump's modeling agency was somehow connected. They were flying them in on planes. There's no record of them coming or going. And all these models during the time were up to this. These modeling agencies. We did a full expose on John Casablancas. And Trump sent his daughter to his modeling school after he already knew that this guy was a straight up person that likes children. 
John Casablancas was telling the public this publicly at the time. He was just right out in the open with it. There's many, many news articles and stories where he was talking about his love for children. And Trump still sent his daughter to his school to learn modeling as his protege. And still worked with Casablancas years later, decades later, in Brazil on his Brazil project. Casablancas headed up the Brazil real estate arm, which is now defunct, but Trump let him run it. This was just a couple decades ago, you guys. A known lover of children. So what will you do with that information? Well, most people won't do anything because they'll say that was a long time ago. Or they'll simply say, he's changed. But we're talking about a specific time period and what went down during that time period. So that's why we're referencing these years and looking at people's actions. Look, they can say whatever they want, but at the end of the day, it comes down to their actions. And the fact of the matter is, is that he sent his 13-year-old daughter, she was either 13 or 14, to learn under a man who had already made public comments about his things he likes. Right? So, that's the truth. You can look everything up that I just said. None of it's a lie. And if you find some inconsistencies with what I'm saying, put it in the comments. Just be polite about it, and we'll take a look at it. All right, let's go back into the chat here. Check out Blue Water Shopping Center England smiley face layout from above. Yeah, smiley face is not good. Look, at the point we're at now, this is about saving lives. So many people are deceived by Trump. I guarantee you, I guarantee you, that when he says, hey guys, let's just take this, just, just take the VC. Look, I'm the one that designed it through warp speed. I made sure it was safe. I know maybe the past VCs were not safe, but this one's safe. And I guarantee you, 90% of the Trump supporters, in other words, people that are going to vote for him in the election, they will take the VC. So this is go time in exposing the lies in the past. You cannot trust this man, just like you cannot trust the Clintons. You cannot trust Obama. You cannot trust Bush 1. You cannot trust any of these people. They all work together. They all work together. Now, let's go back in the chat here. 13 tribes of revelation, says Lisa. I need to take another look at that. Thanks for that. Sorcery is what is deceiving everyone, says Rebecca. Yes, absolutely. We're ever, there's a lot of people under a very strong delusion right now. Thanks, end of days. Absolutely agree with what you're saying. No justice, no peace. Tamara says, oh, I couldn't read that, sorry. Let them go first, they will die. Well, yeah, I get that, but if someone's under a delusion, we're not supposed to give up on them, right? We just have to continue speaking the truth. So there's something to be said for trying to snap people out of it all the way down to the last moment. Some people might watch this video right here. And for the simple fact that I'm not choosing a side, I'm not choosing Democrats. This isn't about getting someone to win an election or getting someone not to win. Maybe someone's reading this and now they can think outside of the right left paradigm and they're watching the show and they're going, wow, you brought up a lot of great points. My Harry Palm is unsubscribed. Okay, that's cool. Take care. And maybe someone is seeing this and going, wow. There's something to this. At the least, if you can't take a man at his word, you can't believe his word. So, I'm going to end the show there. I love each and every one of you. We'll be back on here tomorrow 
with more groundbreaking revelations. Take care and be safe, everybody.